want to appreciate God for the opportunity to be before us again. It's been a long while I was here. I want to appreciate that day, the CMD. God bless you, sir. And every other officers working with him, our prayer is that the Lord will renew your strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads as we want to pray? You are good. You are kind. You are more than this. I lost your words. Trying to describe you. Elohim. Elion. Alishelewi. Your greatness is all I have seen. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping. Lord, we've come again to learn at your feet. We pray that you will speak your word unto us in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that this word will find space in our hearts and it will become fruitful in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This morning, our reading will be very long, so I may not read everything. I just pick the portion that we will talk about. Today, we are looking at the title, The House of Mary Fellowship Church. And we'll be relating it to the environment of the hospital. Now, what we all know about Acts chapter 12 is the story of how an angel miraculously brought Peter out of prison. But today, I want to shift focus from Peter to the house that prayed. Because what most of us used to use when we want to pray in Acts chapter 12, Lord, send your angel. Release me from the prison of my life. Today we want to shift attention. Let's look at the church that actually prayed for Peter. And under that, I want us to see seven characteristics of the house of Mary. Number one is that the Bible tells us that it's the house of a woman. So the Bible said that prayer was ongoing in verse 12. In the house of Mary. But they now gave us something specific about that Mary. They said the mother of who? The mother of John. Whose son name is Mark. My first prayer for you is that out of you will come greatness. Yeah. Out of Booth will come greatness. Yeah. Every student that leaves Booth to various places, we will hear of you in pleasant places. Yeah. So Bible told us that Mary was the mother of John, I mean of Mark, of Mark. And this Mark is the one who wrote the book of Mark. Now, according to history, when you look at the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, any story you find in Matthew, you find in Mark, and you find in Luke, be sure that Mark has the most detailed account. 
This is the same mark that caused the quarrel between Barnabas and Paul. And Paul said, no, we are not going to go with him. Barnabas said, there's no problem. Let us split. When you go to the book of 2 Timothy, you discover that Paul wrote a letter. I said, please, I think I need that mark now. See, let me tell you something. It's not by how much you have learned. It's about how much God is ready to do something through your life. There are certain people that you don't like, but you cannot just ignore them. If Paul had knew how Mark would have been, he would not have fought a young man. Because the woman who betted that man is a woman of the spirit. So Bible gave us the first description that that house belonged to a woman. And the question I want to ask is, what kind of house are we building as women? What kind of house are we building as men? And we are going to see the kind of house that this woman had. The second characteristic about the house of Mary is that it hosted a church. Verse 12, Bible said, and many people were brought, they were gathered. What they, were they doing? They were praying. So it hosted the church. I don't know the size of the house, but I know that the size of the church is the size of Mary's house. So Bible said they hosted many people and they were Christians. Who are you hosting in your own house? What kind of people are we hosting in this hospital? Are they men that have like mind? Are they truly Christians? My prayer is that the Lord will walk upon all of us like he did for the house of Mary. The third thing I saw is that it is a house known for prayers. Bible said they were gathered. What were they doing? They were praying. And earlier before this time, you discover that if you read from the beginning of Acts chapter 12, Bible said while Peter was in prison, he said constant fervent prayers were held. You cannot enter the house of Mary and you will not attract the spirit of prayer. Because what they do in that house is what? It's prayer. What are they doing in my own house? What do they know boot for? You know that there are some people, their house is known for Big Brother Nigeria. They can argue, Teddy, and what's that name again? Chioma, who again is there? They know everything. You know, it's a pity today. I've gone to a house that they even own Jane to what Big Brother Nigeria. is what we didn't know my own house for. There are some people's house that the only thing they know is book. You are reading 24-7. We are not saying book is not good though, but book is not everything. John Mark was a scholar. But yet the house of his mother was known for prayers. He read. If he did not read, his book will not enter into the Bible. But we knew him as a man of prayer too. What will my own house be known for? What will Booth be known for? Is there a place where you come? Do you know that there are some people who come and say, Ha! Ah, I pray I don't make that noise. So God, that is wicked. I hope you know that they made that kind of complaint. Shall we rather go to Lautech than come to Bowen? I mean, I've experienced it one or two times like that. That you see the patient and they're like, Why are you shouting? Are you the only one? And I'm like, Ah. Somebody is in pain and he's shouting. Shouty, stop making noise. You are not the only one in the hospital. I say, Hey. Oh, I wish one day a patient would drag the nose. And bite her so that she will know how serious the pain is. And it's true. What will this hospital be known for? I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The fourth thing is that it was a house that hosted angels. 
and angelic activities. If you look at verse 7, Bible says, Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. When you go to verse 15, do you know that I discovered something that when Rhoda told the people that it was Peter she saw, Bible said, No. What did they say? You saw an angel. He didn't tell her that you saw a ghost. It means that they are used to the activities of angels. I believe in angels. So. Bible said they are ministry spirits. And Hebrews told us, he said, do not be weary in doing good. For by so doing, some people have done what? They have hosted angels without knowing. There are still activities of angels that is still in existence till today. There are certain things that happen to some people. You know that this one is not ordinary. I remember that one day, one of my fathers was traveling and he was late. He said, all of a sudden, a madman just came out from inside the bush. And the madman stood by the road and was directing the traffic. Of course, you don't want to go against the madman. So the man controlled everything. And immediately he finished. And he saw the car of my father passed. He entered back into the bush. They didn't see it again. There are certain testimonies that I've had that even me myself, I'm still asking myself, hey, is this possible? I, know, I can't imagine how God will use a madman to come and control traffic. A madman entered the bush, they never saw him again. There was a testimony of somebody that they shared in the, uh, in the seminary too. The man was very broke and he needed money. So he got to the bank, GT Bank, and he stood by the queue and he was praying, Lord, this money I want to pay is dead. So I don't have it to hit at home. A man just walked into the bank. I say, sir, I've gone out of the transaction. Okay. Can I transfer the money to your account so you help me withdraw? Man, I say, since we're in the same bank now, there's no problem. And the man transferred 500000 And he said, please, I'm coming. That was the last time they ever saw the man. He was in the bank. The bank closed. The bank officials followed the man to look for this person that transferred the money. They never saw him. And he never came back to the bank. Just like that. Please believe in the activities of angels. So. Let's go to the fifth one. It is a safe house. Verse 12. Do you know that I saw something very interesting? The Bible said when Peter came to himself, the first place he thought of was the house of Mary. And the question is, were they not other places? My prayer has always been God. When men are looking for a place to hide, let them find my house as one. That when people get sick and they are looking for the first hospital to go to, let it not be because other hospitals are on strike. That's why they came to boot. Let it be that it was somebody who had come here before and has testified that I came here and I did not remain the same. Let me recommend the place for you. Go to Bowen. Bible said when Peter came to himself, the first place he went to was where? That was because he knew that there is no one who enters the house of Mary that will come back the same. Bible said that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The writers do what? They run it any house that bears the name of the Lord is also a strong tower. I pray the prayer to God that God let no man enter into my house and return back without a testimony. I heard of the story of Baba Deboye who came to visit a couple. They have been looking for children. They didn't tell Baba. So the plates they used to serve him. When he was going, the husband told the wife, said, we will not wash this plate. So they did not wash the plate. They now poured food on it and used the same spoon Baba used to eat. After nine months, they came back with twins. 
When they were telling Baba the story, Baba said, Ha, Moko Jononi. That man has become an embodiment of the presence of God. It has got into a state that the chair Baba uses to sit, once he stands up, the protocol will carry it along. Because as he's standing up, you will see Q. They want to sit on the same chair. What is so special about that man is because he has become something to people. That's not human worship. It's because somebody has carried the presence of God. There are some houses you will go to without praying. Something will be making you feel like you want to pray. Why? Because you know the owner of the house. I read about a house in Lagos. They said when the landlord was going to pack out, he traveled abroad and he knelt down and said, Lord, anybody who takes this house after five years, let them also travel abroad. So the first occupant of the house, he discovered that all of a sudden it is just started working. After five years, he traveled abroad. He now called his younger brother and said, ah, I don't want this house to miss. So come and stay there. He didn't know what was going on. No? When the younger brother packed him, all of a sudden too, his own life changed. After five years, he was going to pack away. He called another of his own family member. Say, it's like there's something about this house. Say, we'll be paying the house rent. Five generations in five years, they all moved abroad. Not one, not two, the entire family. So one day, one of them had to go and look for the owner of the house. And say, Baba, what did you do to this house? Baba said, the dad was going to pack away. I knelt down before God. And I said, Lord, don't make this house an ordinary house. Say, let there be a covenant upon this house that it's impossible to stay in this house and not move abroad. If you don't move abroad, pack to your own house. Today, they are fighting for that house. Why? The family did not want to drop the key, mommy. Can we get to such a place in boot that it's impossible for somebody to come once and leave this place and not be the evangelist that will be preaching boot? Jesus encountered the Samaritan woman once. That woman went back to the village. The Bible said when they came back, what did they tell her? They said, we believe, not because of what we told us, but because we ourselves, we have done what? We have seen it. That God will make boots carry his presence indeed. In the name of Jesus. The last point is that it is a house that did the impossible. Bible said when Peter arose, he thought he was dreaming. Why? He did not believe that kind of thing would happen. You know, that's the first time that I saw Peter too, shocked. And he was like, I think I'm dreaming. So when he came back to his he said, ha, ah, so it was the Lord that did it. There are still impossibilities that God is doing, you know. That all of a sudden, it's not because of the prescription of your drugs you just see cancer disappear and the person will go back home and be asking see what exactly did this doctor do for you i read about the story of a young man who graduated as a dentist and he went to god seven days prayer and fasting and said lord give me an insight that you have never given any other dentist before so he said one day a general came to his hospital and he said, somebody recommended you to me. Say, I don't know you before. And they told me that you just graduated. But they said, I should come and try you. And he said, sir, all knowledge is from God. Just tell me where you have the problem. So the man said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, sir, give me five minutes. And he went to his closet. I said, God, it's like this case you brought for the first time. It's a difficult one, no? He said, but please, give me what to do. He said, and the Lord told him. And he came out of the room and went to meet the general and said, sir, do this, do this, do this, do this, do that. And the man said, how much do I pay you? He says, sir, don't pay me. Wise man. He says, sir, if you go and you are healed and it works, after one month, come back, whatever you have, give it to me. The general said, hey, is that it? He said, yes. When the general went, he used it according to how the man told him and the two teeth left. By the time the general was going to come back, 
He looked at the young man and said, Do you know I've been to London? I've been to Germany. I've been to India. They didn't find the solution to this thing. He said, But you, Nigerian, you don't graduate. Have you brought solution? He said, I just built a three story building and I'm looking for what to do with it. He said, But it's like I've seen a dentist that I can trust. And he removed the car keys. Uh, he removed the house key, three story building. And he gave it to the man and said, As I was coming, I've called all my friends who are abroad that we are going to furnish an hospital in Nigeria. He said, And all of them are already making donations. Go and calculate all the machines that you will need that can set up a dentist shop. That was how the man blew for life. There are places where you go to, impossible becomes possible. I've read the testimony of Daddy Adeboye that a sister said she went to the hospital and they told her that her younger sister has breast cancer. And she told them, remove the two breasts. Say, the God of Adeboye that I serve will grow two new breasts. And she brought the sister to redemption camp. After two weeks that she said, two new breasts grew. They said the doctor wanted to run mad. Say it's impossible. He said, but you are seeing it. Abi Bryce used to lie. Bow down your heads as we want to pray. Lord, make good your own place. Make my house your own house. We don't just want to stand as an hospital alone. No, we want to stand as a place where the presence of God is. Jacob came to Bethel. The Bible said he arose the following morning. And he said, so God is in this place and I did not know. Pray to the Lord. Say, Lord, make my house your home. Make Bowen University teaching us be to your home. Let there be activities of angels. Do the 